Hi, my name is Sally Hurst and I'm a painter and a printmaker. Uh, I'm in my studio here in Norwich in the UK. There's some building work going on outside, so it's a bit noisy. But the reason I'm here is because I teach online printmaking courses using craft die cutting machines, not etching presses, okay? Uh, these guys retail anywhere between 70 and 150 pounds. An etching press, whew, you know, five, six, 700 pounds and more, okay? But these are great. I did do a video, and you may have seen it, where I compare the two presses that I use, a Sizzix uh, Big Shot Plus. If you've got the name there, they do do a Pro, which is larger, but there's no need for that. This is the Sizzix Big Shot Plus, and an X Cut Express. And the reason I'm doing this video is because the X-Cut Express has been discontinued. You can still find them on eBay, but they're no longer making any. Uh, and there's been lots of debates online, particularly on a Facebook group that I'm a member of, which is called Craft Press Printmaker. Alternatives, okay? So, okay, let's bite the bullet on this one. And so I've spent the last week doing some eBaying and buying. And I have, I thought I was going to have seven. There's another one to come, which hasn't arrived in time for me to do this video. Uh, but I have six different types of die cut presses to test out for you, to compare for you, so that you can see whether something that you already have is perfectly suitable. And you can certainly see what it is you're looking for if you're looking for to buy a new or a second hand one. Uh, I haven't particularly planned this video and I'm going to try not to spend all day editing. Uh, it's more important that this information gets out to you. Okay. And in addition, I have made some color graph plates and some dry point plates, one for each. I didn't want to use the same one on all six because they vary. The more you print with them, say so dry point, you get less and less and less coming through because it gets squashed. So I thought, each one has got a fresh inked plate or two to be printed with, okay? Before I go into that, I want to talk a little bit more about what I mean by calligraphy and what I mean by printing in taglio, in case you haven't approached that before. Um, I've got a couple of plates here. Uh, so there's two types of calligraphy. This is a calligraphy plate, one of the ones that I use on my uh, online course. Uh, and this is a card plate, a bit bendy, it's been lying around a while, and pushing it through the press makes it a bit bendy. Uh, and on it, I've put a selection of pastes and gels, acrylic pastes and gels. That will hold the ink, okay? And the ink is, I'm using Acua, but there's other brands of ink. I'm not going to go into a whole thing about all of that. I will do, I'm happy to do that as another, as another video. But basically, the ink goes onto the plate and then you wipe it off the surface so it's in, it's inside, okay? Uh, and the press's job is to push the paper, and we use damp paper, not because of the oil and water thing rejecting each other, the damp paper makes the paper, the dampness makes the paper super flexible. So the roller can push the paper into the plate and suck out the ink, okay? You have a print. So this is a built one, building up from a base. Uh, this is one that has been uh, varnished and cut into. So all these lines and shapes you're seeing here is where I have cut and peeled away the top layer of the card. That's what we call a reductive plate. There are other plates. Oh my, oh my, oh my. This is a silk aquatint plate. So basically some silk, some very fine shibori silk has been glued or attached to the card. And then I've put pastes and gels on top of it. The silk will hold the ink. That's going to give me a real rich color or darks if I'm printing in black. And all the different pastes and gels are going to do different things in terms of rejecting the ink. So what is a press that has the pressure to go down, roll across around the board, the plate goes through the press, think like a mangle, and has enough pressure to suck out the ink. 
okay? And that is what we're using die cut presses for. Now, a disclaimer. What we're using them for is not what they're designed for, all right? So um, if you break the arm on your press or if your press just gives up on you, it's not, the, it's not the company's fault, your press is not at fault. We are abusing these things and we're using them for what they are not designed to do. They're designed to cut out shapes using uh, metal, metal dies that you lay on top, run through the press, and then you've got your shape. Okay, so that's what they're used for. But a while back, people realised that actually it's possible to do intaglio printmaking. Now, the other form of printmaking, okay, so this is calligraphy, uh, is dry point. And dry point, if I can reach over, this is one I've done earlier. Dry point is where you have a piece of plastic, or it could be copper. The joy of the plastic is it's see-through and it's cheap. And you scratch into it, okay? And where you scratch and score holds the ink, you wipe off the surface, you put it through the press. Okay. Now I know um, there's some debates going around about something called a cold lamin laminating press. Okay. And I know, I think dry point certainly works with one of those. I'm not sure, and from what I've heard, I'm certainly not sure whether the, a cold press laminator or a cold laminating press uh, will cope with the thickness okay, and the grunginess of a built plate. But my next test will be using a cold press laminator or cold laminating press. Um, and the seventh press that was meant to arrive anyway for today, but hasn't. All right. So there's still one more press to go in terms of our die cut machines. But that's a dry point. OK. And that's one that I've made. I've made seven of them, but I only need these six now. I've made seven of them and inked seven of them to put through the presses. Okay, uh, this isn't really calligraphy, but it's a very straightforward way of working, uh, and I thought I would include it. Obviously, all of these will print this. All of these, I'm just convinced, would obviously do what we call monotype, which is where you just put ink on a surface uh, and wipe away a bit and run it through. They'll all also do lino printing, but I'm not testing that. If you want to learn about how to use lino prints using a die cut machine, then the man you need to find is the great Colin Blanchard. OK, I will put a link below this video. He works in lino and he works using a die cut. Right? It just gives enough pressure to run the rollers across the surface and the ink is transferred to your lino plate or your relief plate. Obviously, we're wanting a little bit more from our presses. We're wanting it to push the paper in. Uh, and that's where the problems lie, OK? We'll see how we get on. These are my six. This is my haul. As I said before, there's one more coming uh, and the laminator press I want to explore as well. Um, but let's just run through what we have here. This is the Sizzix Big Shot Plus. The Pro is A3, okay? So that's what that is. I'll talk about this in a minute. This is a Cuttle Bug, uh, and this is the wild card because this is a different size to all the others. Uh, these will all take about 9, 10 inches. This is more of a 6 inch guy, 150 centimeters. Um, and then I've got a, can't see the name of it, this is a Big Sister by Cheery Lynn Designs. I think they also do a little sister. Uh, that one I bought on eBay. This is my X-Cut, and I've had this a long time, uh, and they do wear well, but they are a bit like hen's teeth at the moment. Then we have a Beera press, okay? And that one is, I bought new. And that one, unlike many of the others, that one and this one, and the cuttle bug are pretty much the only ones you can buy from new. Uh, I think, I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong, the big sister has been discontinued and the one that's coming from eBay called a crossover, I think that's also been discontinued. But they turn up on eBay. We buy these things, don't we? And people don't use them. And so they turn up secondhand. So the X-Cut is that one. Uh, the Beera is my new one. And right at the end there is a Spellbinders Platinum, 
which I think has been discontinued, um, but I think I saw it on a couple of US stores, okay? Uh, so that's what we have, that's our haul. What else do you need? Well, they come with a plate, okay? This is the Sizzix plate, and the idea is that holds all your stuff, and it goes in and out, okay? And you turn the handle, to enable it to do that. So it comes with a plate, and the plates are, are okay. The Sizzix one is probably, out of all of them, the best size. Uh, this was my one from oh, era. Okay, it's a little bit shorter. I hope you can see that. Um, they're good and sturdy, and they're fine if you're not doing very big prints. So if you're doing a little print, then you're perfectly fine. Don't need anything else. If you're wanting to really get into this and take advantage of prints, you know, this size, okay. um, all of those, by the way, were printed on these machines. You need something longer, which means you have to make or find something that is longer. It can be any length, all right? You're not restricted by length because you just keep going, all right? I've got one over there that's made from an IKEA kitchen door and it's 120 centimeters long and I'm printing long skinny prints with that one. Your restriction is your width, okay? As long as it can go in and out quite easily, uh, the rest is really about length. Um, and you also want something that's very rigid. These are super rigid. These are kind of like a polypropylene. Uh, so definitely rigid, it's definitely rigid. Uh, what I use and what I've got here, but it's plenty, I say IKEA kitchen doors, um, shelving, MDF, anything. We're looking at about 12 millimeters deep, whatever you use. That's gonna not only give you the rigidity, but it also means that you have less packing up if you're not using one that the roller goes down. I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, this is half a, a catering cutting board, okay? They come in different colors for red ones if you're using meat and all those kind of things, okay? Uh, and I've literally just taken the jigsaw and chung, chomped it down the middle very badly. It's not level, okay? My jigsaw saw skills are not great, but it fits through, okay? It's fine, absolutely fits through. Now, if you're UK based, you can get something from a company called handprinted.co.uk and they produce a bed and blanket accessory set about 25 pounds. Um, for the X-Cut, I mean, okay? Not the Sizzix, the X-Cut. So it's an X-Cut accessory set you're looking for. The benefit is, if you buy that one, it fits all of these. Because the X-Cut is very slightly narrower than the Sizzix and the other guys, okay? Uh, obviously, the other way around wouldn't work. If you bought, uh, for example, my Sizzix board will not fit in my X-Cut. That few millimetres are crucial, it simply won't go. So if you haven't got access to, if you're UK and you haven't got access to cutting a board or finding a board, then that's fine, you know, 25 pound, that's great, because the blanket, the blankets that I use, and they use good blankets too, that's gonna to cost you a tenner anyway, okay? The blankets, my blanket I get from a company in London, it's just a very dense felt, uh, but any felt would do. You could have more than one layer, no reason at all. You can use smooth yoga mats. And as long as it's smooth and spongy, that's fine. And we need one of these. And we need one of these because we need to push. The blanket helps push the paper and pushes the paper into that plate to suck out the ink. If you're not using a blanket, you're just gonna get a relief print, okay? Um, which is fine if that's what you want to do. Um, so, blanket and bed. Uh, you also need things to pack it up if you're not using one with a dial. Um, so for the Cuttlebug, as an example, I have made, oh, so that's, that's the point, for the Cuttlebug, I've made its own little bed. How cute is that? This was a piece of Foamex that I had lying around in my studio. Uh, and it's nice and light and damn easy to cut. Okay, so that's good. Um, but you need, so that's my little blanket for my cuddle bug. Uh, but I've got some bits of mount card or mat board that's going to help because the cuddle bug doesn't have a dial. I've got to build the pressure up 
from the bed up, okay, rather than the roller going down. They're the two main differences. Uh, so I've got some paper and some card. Uh, you also need, oops, you need something like newsprint or tissue paper to take the moisture away from the paper and all the bits of ink. You don't want you to get your blankets getting too inky. Uh, so newsprint's really handy to keep everything clean. Uh, and some copy paper or thin bits of paper just lying around. Even I find even the ones that have the pressure dial. I sometimes need to slip something underneath the plate just to get enough bite. Okay, so having that handy is really useful. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the different types of presses we have. Right, these three presses are have an adjustable top roller. Okay, the X Cut, uh, the Big Sister by Chirilin, and the Beera. And also, when it comes, uh, the crossover. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by an adjustable top roller. And they're heavy. It's here on the X Cut. On the Beera, it's, it's here, I think. I haven't used this one yet. Uh, and on the big sister little dial on the top. But let's have a look what we mean. And okay. you squash your hands by any means whatsoever. But hopefully you can see the roller goes up and down. Okay? He goes down, he goes up. Okay. And that means that when we put our board in, and our paper and our plate and everything else, okay, and we're good to go. We turn it down, okay, and we're off, all right? Um, so don't feel if you haven't got one with an adjustable dial uh, that you're in any way disadvantaged because there's advantages to both, okay? It really is a question of what you prefer and um, what you can find. Uh, I find, I don't know, it's the same with these two because I haven't used them yet. I certainly find the X cut that I'll be happy to set the pressure again, okay, which can be a bit annoying to say the least because you know you have to kind of do the whole thing, lift it up, go down again, and start again. It might just be my X cut, I don't really know, but that's that's how it is. So it's not, you know, it's 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 great, but it's not super great. So that's the X cut. Take that out, I'm not my camera. Uh, what the X cut also comes with these, uh, these plates, and the idea is you, you, there's a thing here, you can see it here, where you can lock it to stop this rolling around. Okay, so I certainly recommend if you're using an X cut, you do that both sides. I'll hold that up so you can see. Okay, so that's locked. Both sides are less floppy. It's still quite floppy. Uh, and the one thing that annoys me about the X cut when I'm using both of these at the same time is with the Sizzix, it has a handle on the top. Okay, with the X cut, to move the way, uh, I have to take everything out and fold it and lift it. Okay, uh, but the fact that it folds up like a like a, a toasting machine does mean you're saving some space. All right, so that's your X cut and I've left the plates out. Uh, the plates, the idea of the plates is that it gives you a flatter surface so that they fit in like this and your bed goes on top. But it won't, it won't fold up with them in place. So to be quite honest, I tend not to bother moving them at all. And then of course you've got your handle. Okay, now they come with, if you're buying it new or out of the box, uh, the handles are separate and you can't get a little Allen key with this one to tighten it up. Hang on to the Allen key because they can get loose, all right, with constant working on it, uh, you need to tighten that one up. So that's my X cut. Next on the block is the big system, which is probably about two kilograms heavier than the X cut. That, that is some weight. My postman struggled with this one. This one I bought on eBay. Unfortunately, he 
very nice, I suppose, he's trying to keep it all together. I've got some tape, I need to get the tape unstuck. Uh, so that's, this is the big sister, again it has a handle, and again it folds out, okay, not such a long bed, that doesn't really matter. Our, our bed, I've got the, I've got the roll it down. Bed fits in. Okay, and I've got a little thing here. I'll turn it round so you can see it better. Oh, this is a beast. Okay, so if I turn the dial, this number is moving from 17 all the way through, which means you could kind of keep an eye, you could keep a note of a certain pressure for a certain plate. Although I find in my plates, because they're all so different. I've tried doing that, it doesn't really work, okay? But that, that was good. Now, the weight is important um, because if this is heavy, I'm suspecting it has metal cogs. I'm not gonna take it apart. Um, but in here are all your cogs, okay? As you're turning it, there's a whole mechanism that is turning the inside. Uh, the cheaper ones, the lighter ones, they're going to be plastic. If it's heavy like this, it means it has a fully metal mechanism. And obviously, you know what I'm going to say, that means it's going to last longer. Okay, it's less likely to snap or break. Fine. But if you are in the market and you're thinking, mm -hmm, okay, and you find one, then certainly the heavier ones are going to have a metal mechanism. Some of them even advertise that it's a metal mechanism, like the Spellbinders advertises on their website that it's all metal mechanism. Okay. So that's the, whoops, get one up. In mind uh, is, is how much of a gap you have. You need enough of a gap. Uh, and there was one that popped up online that I was almost tempted to go for. It was a beautiful orange color uh, called, called the tangerine. The gap looked really small. Uh, you need a goodly size gap or mouth as we call it in printmaking terms in order to get everything through that you want. Remember, we're putting a bed through uh, and blanket and a plate and paper. That's quite a chunk of stuff, okay? So uh, a good size mouth is crucial. And again, this one folds up. Uh, last but not least, until the crossover arrives, uh, this is the new one. I've got it mucky already, uh, by Bira. When I first got this, and this, this has come from Amazon under one of those deals where you don't pay the shipping. So it took about a week to get here. I think it was about 140 pounds-ish, I'm not sure. Uh, it arrived yesterday and my heart dropped because I thought it didn't have, I thought they'd left the handle out. Uh, and it took me a while to realize that the handle was inside here. Okay. <laughs> Which is fine. It means you've got somewhere to put the handle. Uh, but I, for a minute there, I thought, oh, blimey, how am I going to send this back to America? How am I going to do this demonstration? So that's my handle. And the handle is, is it has a, a little spring finger thing. And if I pull that up, I can release the handle, put it in there, off you go. Clever. Okay. I'll show you that on here. Okay. Other than that. If I get it in the right place, we're good to go. And I've heard good reports from this from people who have got one. So I was glad when it popped up. I've not found one second hand in the UK. I think these are mostly America and Australia. Um, I've not found a supplier for this in the UK either. So my one came from America. This one came from America. So we have our two wings. These feel a bit plasticky. I don't remember, has taped over because she hates pink. Okay, this kind of horrible salmon, girly pink. Okay, which we really don't like. But that's okay, and I quite like the fact that you've got space, you've got storage space either side to keep your handle. All right, so that's that. Um, I need to turn it round so I can see the dial. The dial is on here, and again, I've literally just un. Box this. It's got here 3D embossed, letter embossed, or die cut. No idea what difference that will make. 
Now, interestingly, what's happening is when I turn this is the bottom roller. Trust me on this one. Very professional video, this, isn't it? The bottom roller is going for them. Okay, so that's, that's using up some of it. It feels quite stiff. Uh, I'm not sure how, how the top, oh, the top roller. Oh, I've got it now. Right, I'm turning around that way. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm not going to edit this bit out. This is a part of one of those unboxing videos. The bottom press and twist at the side says loose and tight, all right? That is moving my bottom roller. I quite like that. Stages. So it goes one, two, three. So it goes fully down, which is die cut, letter press and emboss. And 3D emboss where it's pretty much disappeared at the top. For our purposes, I'll probably have it on die cut. That's it lower, okay? And then this one is what adjusts it up and down. Now that's going to be interesting um, because it may mean it's going to be, the roller is going to be pushing up to the bed. It should be all right. We'll see how we get on. Uh, quite like this one. I like the weight of it. And again, like I said before, this one is available. They're still making this. Back on this side now. Um, right, what have we got? This is um, the Big Shot Plus, okay? Quite mucky. Been using this a while. Uh, again, as you saw before, this goes in. And off we go, all right? This is the simplest, and probably for an A4, new, the cheapest you're going to find. Okay, uh, downsides, doesn't fold up, right? So you need to be able to store, uh, it's about 14, 15 inches, about 40 centimeters. You're gonna need to be able to store that. Plus side, it's a beast, okay? It's, it's a workhorse of a die cut press. Uh, there's nothing on it to go wrong. There's, there's nothing, it's got a good, a good handle, it's got a rubber thing, so I can pick it up. And I can pick it, pick it up uh, with everything in it, unlike the X-Cut. I can pick it up with anything in it and dump it somewhere else and carry on with something else, okay? So I really like that. Uh, downside, again, other than the fact it doesn't fold up, is you don't have uh, the pressure, right? The roller is fixed. So what you need to do, I've got a range of bits of hardboard or cardboard, and I'll, when I come to print with it, you'll see, but basically you need to pack it out underneath, so that's, that's going nicely now, okay? Enough pressure there between the rollers to bite on the plate and carry it through. All right, so I've got my blanket, I've got a couple of bits of hardboard, and I've got my, uh, my bed. And once you've got the pressure right for your plate, you haven't got to readjust it, okay? You don't get any slippage of pressure like you do with the more complicated ones with the pressure. So these are all pros and cons that you might like to think about. Currently, I saw this in the range advertised this week for £64. On Amazon, it's about £70. You could pick them up on eBay for about a tenner. Okay, super cheap. And remember, you're not necessarily using all the beds and the garbage that comes with it. You just want the press. Okay, so I, I love my Sizzix. Very fond of it. Uh, let's get that out. We can have a look at the others. Uh, then we've got the spell binders, which is advertised, I remember seeing, as fully metal mechanism. Okay, uh, so this is probably, even though it um, hasn't got the dial, it's probably uh, the big sister of an X cut in terms of the weight of it and the sturdiness of it. Again, discontinued, you don't see many of them, so you don't see many of them on this side of the, of the pond. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, so I've got my handle. That does that. So it's more compact than the Sizzix. It's going to be easier to store on top. And again, you can use the same bed mechanism. 
And here it comes. Here we go. All right. So it's about the same size mouth as the Sizzix. I've got two, two bits of board and my blanket, uh, and I'm good to go. All right. So that's the platinum spell binder. Move this up. Again, I can move that out of the way. Oh my lord, that's heavy. I will weigh these guys for you guys. Weigh these for you guys. Lastly, I've got this. <laughs> this is super cute. This is handbag. I was impressed by the weight of this when it arrived. That's quite a weight. I had it in my head because the green one looks really plasticky. And some of the ones, they got flowers on designs. They just look cheap and plasticky. I was impressed by the weight of this, actually. Uh, it looks like a nice little beast. Um, the, the, the flaps are a little bit plasticky. Okay, um, let's get my... It. And the handle folds out. Okay, so again, it goes in, tucks away quite neatly, so it's quite easy to carry around. It's also got a super, super rubber base, which sucks. So it's nice and rigid. Okay, really like that, definitely. So I've made myself a little, <laughs> look at you, super cute, little thing. And I'm just going to pack it out and see. Um, probably need a bit more than that. I'll need to get some more bits of board. So just trust me on this one. It will, I'm sure. There we are. Okay. Need a bit more pressure, a little bit more board, but that's okay. Again, the roller, you've got a really good size mouth. The rollers don't move. It's got a good weight, nice handle that's fixed, uh, and you can fold it in. I managed to pick this up on eBay without any bed or anything, so not really any use for a die cutter um, for £25, including postage. All right, so that's nice and cheap. They still make these. Cute as that. Okay, that's our six presses are the plates I'm going to put through these presses. As I said before, I've got seven here, so I'll just take one out. Uh, don't need those two, it's fine. So I've got six. I've got six the same, or as good as I can make them the same, and I've already inked them. I inked them yesterday, actually. Um, one of the joys of using Akua is that it doesn't dry on the plate. So you can, you can ink in advance and then have a printing day. So yesterday was my mucky day. This day, hands-wise, should be, says she, a little bit cleaner. So what have I got here? Well, I've showed you these before. These are the dry point. Uh, and I've scratched into, I've scored into with a dry point tool, which are the lines here. Okay, I'll hold it up a bit closer. Here and here. Uh, this bit I've rolled over with one of those seam cut, seam measuring, textile-y, roller -y. <laughs> sorry, not very scientific. I like the dots. Uh, sandpaper, but a fine sandpaper, and a rough sandpaper here. Uh, and this bit here, well, I'm not sure how well you can see that, there we go, uh, is where on my other press, not one of these, but on my other press, I push the, pa the plastic through with a little piece of a, a metal mesh. Okay, now if you do that, I do quite like embossing. Uh, if you do that kind of embossing, where it's, where it's dug in, it's, it's holding the ink. Okay, uh, if you do that, make sure you put something on top. It's not a blanket situation, it's basically the, pla the uh, board, the plastic, the metal, something on top, go through the press. You can do it with your die cut machines, uh, and uh, it's a nice thing to do. I um, definitely do it on my Tetra, etc. course, uh, and I don't, so certainly do it on my Discover Calligraphy course. That's what that is, right? So they're dry point. Called dry point because we're not using any acids. It's not wet. Uh, these guys are what I would call built uh, clography plates. Uh, and I'll put pictures up of what they look like. You might have already seen that. Uh, and what have I got on here? I've, ink I've inked it. So you obviously, to a certain degree, you're seeing an inked plate. It was just a piece of cardboard. So uh, because I didn't use any varnish or shellac on the cardboard, that's gone a kind of grey, and that will print a mid-value. Um, on top, the first thing I did was put some uh, light moulding paste. 
Okay, you can use tile adhesive, all sorts of things on the top. Then I brushed on some uh, micaceous iron oxide, which is like a gritty paint, which is beautiful. It holds the ink in the way that carborundum does. Uh, then I dribbled on. That's lovely. That's going to give me lights. I know it's glossy. I dribbled on some clear tar gel that I put into a little dribble bottle. And then I stenciled on some heavy gel. Okay through a stencil. And then finally, uh, well almost finally, I, I put a bit of this foil on. I love this foil. It's very, very thin, incredibly sticky. Uh, I often call it instant varnish because you can lay it down on a plate and, and it kind of like gives a seal to the plate, but still shows the texture through. And I scored into it with my dry point tool. Uh, that's pretty much all I did. Oh no, finally, I put a little bit of shellac along the top here before I inked it just to reduce the dark of the moulding paste. It's quite absorbent. It absorbs an awful lot of ink. And I made a pile of those, okay? Um, while, I'm, while you're watching this, I have some watercolour paper in soak. Uh, and I, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to print all of these. I'll still video it, um, but I won't necessarily show you all the video. It'll just take too long uh, and I'll speed up bits. But what I will do at the end is tell you how I feel about these machines, okay? And show you what they've done physically in terms of how well they pick up the ink, all right? So I'm still gonna keep the video rolling. Uh, I'm not gonna talk through it. Um, I'm just gonna do it and then, and then speed bits up, okay? So that's where we go. So I'm starting off with the uh, Sizzix. As I said before, I'm just going to run through these, uh, but I will mark the paper so that I know which one I've done on which press. Uh, and at the end, I'll tell you if I had any issues with any of them. So I've got a piece of newsprint on top of my boards, on top of my plate, my baseboard, and I've got a piece of newsprint here with the blanket. I've got my inked plate, uh, ink side up. and paper down you can tell i can tell it's biting and you should better hear a jump when it comes off the plate okay i always go back there, right. So that's the X, that's the Sizzix and the pressure is fine. And when you lift it off, okay, I've got what I wanted, which was some strong dark, just a bit lighter here at the top where the uh, shellac was. That's my foil with darks. Uh, that's a bit of the cardboard showing through. That's my bicaceous iron oxide. And again there. That's the clear tar gel. This is the heavy gel. And it's picked up the ink, which is what I want it to do, around the edges of that. Okay, so that's the Sizzix. All right. Uh, so that's what I'm aiming to do for all of them. Obviously, I'm now going to do the dry point on this one, but I'll have to pack it up because the plate is much thinner. Okay. So I've got my lines I scored, scribbled, the dots, the pale grey for the sandpaper, heart, the rough sandpaper has given me a darker line uh, and that's where I did the embossing. I'm going to do that with the five other presses, uh, but I'll speed it up.
so now I've got three that do have a pressure dial, okay? So the roller will go up or down, depending on what I want to do. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. One, you can put your, go right up and put your sandwich in, okay? And then go right down. Often I find that doesn't, still doesn't give me quite enough pressure. Okay, so I tend to, as well not the camera, come out just so it's just so it's slightly out, and then go down a little bit more, just to bite it. So if you want a number, I'm non number five. With this one, I think I suggest if you get one like this, you need a thicker bed. Uh, I needed to pack it out a little bit, even though the pressure dial pushed it right down, it still wasn't biting quite enough. But once I got the pressure right, it was fine. it's the turn of the brand new Bira, which has two dials on the side. I'm setting them to the tight as they will go. So the top roller is down and the bottom roller is up. Uh, theory being, you can always make it, I uh, can always loosen it, okay, if it's too tight. But I'm suspicious, but I don't think that's tight enough. It's not the machine's fault. Uh, clearly it has a wider mouth than any other machine. So it's going to be a mixture of packing as well as the dial. Once you get it right, you're good to go. So actually what I'm going to do is recalibrate that. I'm going to go up. Or rather, what I've done now is I've put the bottom roller right down as far as it will go. Not used this before, okay? This is all, it's all fresh. And I'm going back to my pieces of board, making my sandwich, I've got my board and two bits of hardboard and my blanket here and the newsprint and I'm going to see if that feels any crunchier. That's clearly too much, all right that's too much so I'm going to go up with the top roller Ah, oh, that's better. That's going through. There's a nice action to it. Um, the one I just used, which I can't remember what it was. The Cheery obviously has a, a, a different gearing. I'm not having to turn my hand so much with this one as I did with the with the purpley coloured one. <laughs> I don't know what it was called. That's okay, that bodes well. Wow, <laughs> that was a marathon. A bit closer. Um, I didn't get any fails, all right? They all printed the plates exactly the same, all right? Exactly the same. So this was, well, I've got it here. That was the Bira. 
I'll take photographs of all these and put them somewhere. Um, but trust me, okay, you wouldn't, there's no discernible difference between the printing of any of them at all. They all work fine. Uh, they all had their little quirks, okay? Um, so, for example, the last one I did, the Bira, that's going to take a bit of getting used to because you've got two dials, okay? Uh, what I ended up doing was having the bottom roller as low down as it was could. It wouldn't let me go through with, and, and play it with the sandwich, all right? I don't know if you saw, on, of course you saw, on video, uh, my usual sandwich uh, with a press that has a dial wasn't enough juice, okay, um, to, uh, to, to work on one of the dial settings. You just have to play with it, guys, simple as that. But it printed fine. I'm not quite sure why it goes bonk, 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 bonk. We have a little kind of ro rolling thing as it's going through. But it seemed to make no difference to the print. So I had the bottom roller right down on that and had the dial in the middle. And then for the dry point one, thinner, ro thinner, thinner plate, remember, I just pushed the bottom roller up, turned it a little to go up. Okay, it's just a question of getting it right with that one. Uh, and obviously you could get away with a thicker bed, probably, for that one, because I was, I've got it here next to me. Uh, the last one I did, I've got two sheets of hardboard and the 12 millimeter. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, that's 18 millimeters of board you could use, all right, before you even start thinking about pressures, all right? So that's, that's the one with the dial on that's new. Uh, but all the others, seriously, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at them all. I've written on all of them what they were. The cuttle bug, wasn't that cute? Okay, some of the ones that only have, uh, that only fold out a little way, you get a bit of a rock going on, because obviously the, our bed is, is longer, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to want to tip over a little bit, uh, and some of them are a bit harder. I did notice that the, I've got it on the floor here, oh, the purple one, whichever one that was, um, that seems to have very small gearing. Okay, there's a lot of this, right, as opposed to, it was, it was I had to do a lot of turns for the distance, but the point being they all work. They all worked fine with my thick, crunchy plate. They all worked fine picking up the detail on, on the dry point. Okay, so right, right down here, very fine detail on that embossing. That's what we're wanting. We're wanting all the ink to end up on the paper, not to be left in the plate. I hope that helps. It's a hot day here in Norwich. <laughs> quite hot and sweaty. Uh, I'm going to now edit this, speed some bits up, uh, and then whack it up on YouTube and on the Facebook page. I hope you enjoy it. Any questions, just ask, guys, just ask. Um, yeah, the cuttle bug is a contender, mainly because it's easily available and, and extremely cheap. You can make small ones, obviously, but that was fine. It, it did what I wanted it to do. That might be going on holiday with me. Take care. See you soon.